This is a tutorial for supervisors and management on best feedback practices. Our objectives here today are to understand the purpose of feedback, learn what feedback is and isn't, learn best feedback practices, learn the tips pyramid for better feedback, and understand what positive feedback is. Too few supervisors give positive feedback in spite of it being a powerful tool. The steps for constructive, corrective, and positive feedback are the same. Except you do constructive or corrective in private, positive in public. When people first realize you're going to give them some feedback that isn't a compliment, they often react negatively right away. It's a natural built-in defensiveness. They may think it's a personal attack. They might broaden the scope if you frame it poorly. Or they will have an emotional reaction, including crying or making it bigger than it is, called catastrophizing, as if it were a disaster or a catastrophe. You can deal with this by doing the feedback in private, starting with the good, if possible. Then focus on the specifics with facts and details. In this tutorial, we'll point out things like explaining the big picture, the impact on the person's brand or reputation, and other steps that will help you get to the feedback and avoid the emotion. If you have a history of giving positive as well as constructive feedback, you will have less of this to deal with. How many people have experienced or find that they do something from the second column only. That results in a workforce that actively avoids doing things wrong instead of one that actively searches for things to do right. Sometimes you do need to tell an employee what to do. When the building's burning down and everyone needs to evacuate, this isn't the time to gather input and guide decision-making to the best solution. Research shows that one of the most productive ways of building true employee engagement is providing effective feedback if it's both positive and constructive. So with that in mind, feedback is information about behavior or performance. It's not about getting people in line. It's used for positive and correcting purposes equally, not just to correct behavior. It's a two-way street engaging the employee and moving forward. It's not just telling the employee what to do and expecting them to follow your directions. It can be peer-to-peer -peer and supervisor to employee, not just supervisor to employee only. And finally, it provides information intended to improve contribution to the company. It's not about slapping a person down to their next level or showing who's the boss. We're going to outline best practices in providing feedback. First, be specific about what the person said or did. Use time periods, dates, numbers. Have examples. Avoid sarcasm, commentary, or judgmental statements. Things like, I don't think you really care about the job, or you seem to be lazy. Don't produce change and actually create resistance. Describe why it is a problem and the impact on the employee and or others. Impact can include damage to the person's personal brand or reputation. If appropriate, lead with what's going well. For example, you can say, John, you're always on time, you don't goof off. These are really appreciated. I wanted to talk to you about something I'm sure you can improve on. Express support the person can address the situation because of his or her strengths. For example, I am sure you can set your mind to fixing this like you do for so many other things. If appropriate, acknowledge how you might have contributed to the situation. Few supervisors who have actually contributed to a situation do this. The employee knows the supervisor has contributed, and acknowledging their part and their correction goes a long way to building trust and the employee accepting feedback. Link the situation to the person's long and short-term goals or their personal brand and reputation. If needed, deal with resistance by helping the person to see the situation 
in terms of the big picture and his or her goals. But don't let that derail the session. Steer it back to the issue at hand. A common pushback is trying to bring in others. Don't let that derail you. Tell the person you'll address the other person, but right now you're talking about them, not someone else. Let's review the steps you take in providing effective feedback. First, the supervisor wants to talk to Todd about his talking in important meetings. Here he's making judgments about the behavior, or in the second example, is sarcastic. Be careful about using absolutes, terms like always or never. They're rarely ever true, and they don't sell your case well. To add to this, neither one of these statements really addresses the problem well. Here the supervisor is being factual, citing time periods, specific behaviors. It's hard to refute that, and it's very clear what he is talking about. After describing the facts of the situation, the supervisor went on to tell Todd how his behavior impacted others. Finally, the supervisor described what he sees as the best situation instead of the one that was happening. In this case, he's trying to involve Todd in the solution. This is ideal because the solution Todd suggested will be his solution and he's more likely to buy into it. The supervisor, however, is prepared to propose a solution if Todd does not. In this case, Instead of involving Todd in a solution, he specified a very clear expectation. While involving the person in the solution is better, sometimes you may have to be more directive. Just be factual and clear. At the end, ask the employee to summarize what they heard and commit to the solution. Don't ask them in such a way that a yes or no is the answer. That avoids commitment. Sometimes the person pushes back. Listen, but don't let them take you down a path away from the problem. For example, you might say, thank you for sharing that. However, we are talking about your interrupting in meetings and I had proposed a solution. Then go on to reiterate and ask for confirmation. Other times, there might be circumstances that you are unaware of, that are brought up, that impact the situation, like our example here. But of course, if you can solve it, or ask the employee for a suggestion and use that, all the better. But be wary of this being a tactic to divert from the issue raised. If so, steer it back like we just discussed. We're going to review the tip pyramid for successful feedback. Procrastinating by supervisors is likely their biggest issue in giving feedback. Delaying only causes other issues to come up that cloud the main one. Procrastinating does not allow it to solve itself. If it's positive feedback, having it close to the event serves to reinforce the behavior better. Involve the person in the solution by asking them for direction or solution, like in this example, or what Todd's supervisor did. If the employee has a solution that works, it becomes their solution, and they're more likely to commit to it. Usually using the word why can drag you down a path of debating intentions or more. That's not what you want. Use what, how, when, and it becomes more factual. In constructive feedback, you can provide what you think is an ideal outcome, but involve the employee in how to get there. Offer support to the employee in their efforts. Describe actions or behavior the person can do something about. Don't expect the employee to fix someone else's behavior or do things they can't actually do. Be specific to things they can take action on. Don't forget, you should be delivering positive feedback to your employees as much or more than any improvement or corrective feedback. This way, you aren't seen as a supervisor who's only interested when things go wrong.
So now we understand the purpose of feedback is improving an employee's contribution to the company, including continuing to do what they do well. We've learned what feedback is and isn't. We've learned some best feedback practices for effective feedback. We've seen the tips pyramid to improve our feedback. And finally, we see what positive feedback can do in an organization. Thank you for listening to this tutorial on providing more effective feedback.